Greetings and salutations, everyone. I'm so glad to see Bishop back safely from the motherland, the holy land. <laughs> I enjoyed the experience via his pictures and videos. Um, I can't wait for the opportunity for me to be able to go there. So I'm excited about that. I hope you guys have been staying safe. Um, Dove Week was phenomenal. Uh, the majority of stuff I did not go to. Uh, we had IMAC conference by Jeff Robinson. Um, they had some great panels and discussions. Um, Bobby Jones did his taping on that Saturday. Jeff Wilford hit, I think it was his sixth annual Dove Awards welcome concert. And our own Kim Agora had a fashion show um, on that Sunday night at his event. The Nashville Gen welcome um, reception and mixer was at um, Motown Gospel. They hosted us. They were fabulous hosts. Um, they rolled out the red carpet for us. Um, the GN support, the national GN supplied us with money for the food. Um, we had approximately, if I'm, uh, we had over 125 people that registered and was still registering to attend that afternoon. Um, about 75 to 80 people showed up. Um, we had a great turnout. Um, we had Royce Mosley, who is one of the Minister of Musics for Bishop Joseph Walker. Um, he provided music. Um, he, has, he had just done live recording two weeks before that. And so he graced us with music. And Dr. Mark Williams, our ear, note, throat specialist, who is also one of the Music City's vice presidents, he did a song from his project. Um, and then we featured a young lady, Aria Gaston, her video, and she's out of Las Vegas. Um, the highlight, the town hall discussion was with Dr. Sherry Blake. Um, she is a licensed therapist in the Atlanta, Georgia area. You've seen her on um, counseling the Atlanta Housewives. You've seen her on the Braxtons and uh, several other um, TV shows. Um, most of her clients are um, stars and athletes um, in that nature. Um, but she came down and did the um, town hall discussion on mental health and how to deal with it in the church and how to deal with it in the industry and um, received a lot of great feedback from that. Um, a lot of people said they were inspired and blessed by that. Um, the pre-gospel luncheon that happens the day of the doves, uh, which is coordinated by Ebony Funderburg, um, had over 200 people registered for that event. Um, Marette Brown Clark was one of the performances that day. Um, and they had a lot, it was, it was very well attended. Um, and then of course the doves was that night. I did not attend the doves, um, nor did I go to the post party, which was hosted by Root Magazine, but, um, they had a fabulous turnout as well. So Dove Week Gospel was definitely represented on the show, on the pre-show. Uh, we had Ricky Dillard win a, a Dove Award, um, this year, you know, I'm excited about that, how I think I'm his number one fan. But um, yeah, it was a great experience. Um, Nashville, even um, some of the people that came from Nashville were inspired and motivated to come be a part of the gen. And then um, some of the leaders in Alabama brought people up. Um, Kim invited people. So we had a really good turnout for the mixer. Oh, and I forgot about Urban Soul Cafes. I did not go to his event, but I stopped by Yes Lord Radio's um, event that Monday night as well. And they had a full room as well. So gospel was definitely represented at the Dubs. But uh, we just excited about you all coming to Norfolk, uh, Virginia, and uh, Sheila Bell, myself, and some of my Hampton Rose Alliance people, Cynthia Beckwith, we've been working hard and uh, Y'all gonna have a time. All I can say is get ready, get ready, get ready. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Bishop, I got a text message correcting me. There were over 100 gin representatives at the Doves, um, and Dove gin was represented at every event. So oh, I wow. did. Let me make that correction. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to let Sheila say something about the, uh, the Virginia. You guys, don't forget that is uh, July the 23rd through the 26th of 2023. Uh, one thing that I'm excited is, um, and we're gonna, I'm going to need you all to really 
help promote um, what we call the rehearsal. So Kanye and um, you know how they've been doing, who was it, Kanye and uh, Maverick City, they do a lot of rehearsing and then they post a lot of that stuff. So what I'm doing now, if you all have somebody like Josh Bracey, you and your choir, I need a actual rehearsal of you guys. Uh, if you all don't know who Josh Bracey is, um, he's the vice president of Memphis, uh, Tennessee. And Josh, tell them the name of your group. Josh Bracey and Power Anointed. Hello, every, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay. Now, if you were a Orlando Draper fan, you're going to love Josh Bracey because that was his, uh, what would you call him? Your mentor. Your mentor, okay. Right, yeah. And his choir definitely has that sound. So um, you can go online and type in his name, Josh Bracey and Anointed Power. Um, but I need a rehearsal because we're going to start posting that. It's going to be a buildup. Uh, even you, Earl, I'll need a rehearsal of you guys because we, we're going to take some of our top directors in the organization and they're going to be teaching hit songs from their album. Okay, so it's going to be kind of um, building everybody up to come and be taught the original music by Earl Bynum, uh, Bishop, um, Josh Bracey, and whomever else we may have. Okay, so I really need you all to get those Facebook pages up so that we can start posting the rehearsals to the big rehearsal. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, this is Neely Dickerson, and you can go to her website and see all the wonderful things and all the people that she's, she's one of the coordinators. Hey, Jazzy Faye, my nephew, uh, for the Sunday's best. But this is Neely Dickerson. Okay, it's on you. Oh, well, let me say this. First of all, she's here to introduce her new project, the Top 40s chart. Okay, go ahead. Neil. Hi, so um, how's everybody doing? Wonderful. I know we can't all talk at the same time, but hi, everybody. Congratulations <laughs> on an amazing uh, conference and an amazing uh, structure that you guys are putting together to continue to keep gospel music thriving and alive. Yeah. Uh, so the gospel top 40 chart, um, is something that was birthed out of a conversation that Brett and I had, and then Brett had with Linda and then Linda Greenwood. And then I had with Linda Greenwood and we've been having it for like five years and we just never did anything about it. So at the beginning of this year, you know, how you just talk about stuff, you don't do it. And just keep talking, talking, talking. So I just was like, look, if we're going to do this, we need to do it. Because we had different ways we wanted to structure it. At one point, we were going to make it like a college chart. But the problem with making it a college chart is that people move a lot. And so, you know, you might do it. And then the programmer or the uh, uh, general manager, somebody might leave and they might not be consistent. Because a chart cannot move if you don't have panelists that are willing to report regularly. So um at the beginning of the year I was like let's at least see if we can get a group of panelists together see if they'll be willing to do it and we'll take it from there so long story short we wanted to launch it in June but we were like we missed it so I was like okay if we don't do it in June we need to do it by gospel heritage month because that's our last moment to make something happen so I think the second week in September, we had a call with some panelists, our second call with some panelists that we wanted to potentially consider being on a, um, being a part of it. And that night, I got off, we finished the, the, the Zoom call, and I got off the call, and then I got this pay, pay this uh, link, I mean, this text message from J. Michael at WXOK that said, as of November 1st, BDS will no longer exist. And I was like, I said something foul because I'm Baptist and... <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> so then he sent me the same thing back and I said well, can you talk because it was 10 o'clock my time so he's in Baton Rouge so it's 12 o'clock his time and I'm like what are you talking about he was like I'm telling you you guys are doing the right thing because this chart is going away 
and you guys are just moving in the right direction. And I just wanted to confirm that for you. And I was like, that's crazy. So at that point, we were like, okay, well, let's just keep with our strategy to get it up um, by the first weekend in October. So we did. And it's a soft launch, which you've been seeing. It hasn't been developed to the level that we want to develop it to. A lot of things will be birthed out of it, but it's a chart that we hope will be community driven and not just, I want to be at the top of the chart to be successful. Right. Um, there's a growth process to be successful. You have artists that um, get to the top of the chart and then they're disillusioned that they don't go, they can't go on tour with Maverick City and Kirk Franklin, or they can't do anything but open for Yolanda in their city. And that's because with the internet, God bless it, with Apple Music, God bless it, and with streaming, it's disillusion, it gives you a disillusion of who you are. So because you have 500,000 streams, it makes you think you're successful. But what really is a stream? If I'm looking for Kenneth Johnson, but Kenneth Wells comes up and I listen it in the first 10 seconds and I realize that it's not Kenneth Johnson, I'm going to click to look for, I mean, I'm not getting who, the Kenneth I want. I'm going to click to get the Kenneth I want, but Kenneth Wells may be, think that I listened to his whole thing, but I didn't. So I'm not really connected to him. So I think the challenge with streaming is that, and you've all made a mistake when you went to stream somebody, everybody's done it. Not on, you just did it. Um, there's times when you'll be streaming something on purpose and your song gonna come on and you click off, click off over it. But if you listen to the first three to five seconds, that person got count counts. So we have this misconception and then we have a world where we're not releasing full bodies of work. So if I only know one song by you, I'm not connected to you. I don't know who you are yet. I want to hear something else besides the one single that they may be playing on the radio and see that it has staying power and that you can come back with another single. Um, it's a record that I worked on uh, for a mainstream artist. Um, Mariah Carey had an album called The Emancipation of Mimi. And it like, so we worked the song Fly Like a Bird, but all of these singles kept coming from the same record on Urban Radio. And I had the album, but had never listened to it because I'm not a big Mariah Carey fan. But every time I would listen to something on the radio, I would go, is that from the same album? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, let me listen to this album. Because when you have a complete body of work, then Mariah Carey could go open for somebody or sing for somebody. But when you just have one song and that's it, a lot of times you just can do something reasonably, but you could never really do something that hold the audience because you won't sell a ticket. So that's the disillusionment that we have in the industry right now. And so I think a part of this chart will be a teaching tool to let people see how long records really stay at number one, because Erica Campbell is still number one on that chart. And Erica Campbell's not doing anything because Ebony, I think, was working that record who I just saw popped up and she doesn't care about positive right now. That is not her priority. But because the record is still being played with the panelists that we have uh, reporting to our chart. Erica Campbell single is number one. And so the chart is just something that we hope will really be something that will draw in the whole community of the industry, will on some level be a teaching tool to let you know that a real gospel chart, you might be on it for a while. You know what I mean? Now we'll stick with Ebony Records that she's working, Smoky Norfolk. That's going to pop up quick because it's smoky. And the people are going to give it a shot because when they when a radio personality is on the air in the morning and they want you to stay tuned in to listen to the radio, I mean, to the weather, the traffic, and tomorrow the poll and what's happening, they're going to play some good music in between. And because they have a good track record with Smokey, Smokey going to get played. At least test it out to see if he'll make it and if he can push further past some of those other singles that he has or hits. But I think the reality of now where we are is we have, with all the comp all the panels and Facebook lives and Zooms and what is that thing called clubhouses that we've had to see if radio is still significant. If we weren't having all those meetings about it, it wouldn't be because it is. It's more significant financially and it's more significant when it comes to really cementing an artist and developing who they are. So hopefully this chart will be a part of the teaching tool for all of that. We have, we'll eventually tell you who all our panels are. Our panelists are, we're trying to make sure that they're consistent because in every call that we've had with them, if they don't report, we don't have a chart. 
So we have to be, they have to be really consistent with their reporting. And so far, they've been really good. I'm really excited about it. When, they, when I send my little reminder out and they send the reports, I'm like, yes. And then we have to sit there and calculate it and see what it looks like. So, but it's been fun. It's been a good learning process. We have some, because it's our chart, we can take liberties with it. For example, at Christmas time, the chart, everybody starts playing Christmas music, but you've never really seen, or I've never seen, you guys may have seen one, but I've never seen a Christmas chart. So we're going to flip the chart. Brett came up with an idea. He was like, let's do 25 days of Christmas. I was like, nah, dog. that means we have to do a chart 25 days, but we could do five weeks of Christmas. So for five weeks, we're going to have, we're going to split it and it'll be the top 25 Christmas gospel records. So it'll be, we could all name the top 10. Silent Night by the Temptations, uh, Now Behold the Lamb, or Jesus is the Reason for the Season by Little Kirk Franklin, um, Nat King Cole's, whatever that song is called, although it's been said many times when he waves, Donnie Hathaway's This Christmas, Keith Wonder Boy Johnson, 12 Days, we can name what the top 10 songs are going to be. But over time, but over time, we'll be, it'll be spotlight songs or um, hot shot songs. So we think that'd be fun. And then the lower 15 of that chart will be the songs, the top 15 that are steady and air in rotation. And then like all charts do, it'll go dark over the holiday. And then we'll come back in January, 2023, ready to happen. So that's what's happening. It's nice too. Y'all can see that. And there it is, y'all. Do y'all like it? Do you like the way it looks? It looks good. It's a clean look. It's a good clean look. Y'all can y'all can come off a of mute and um Yeah, it looks really good. Y'all like that? Yeah. I think it's beautiful, Neely. Good job, Neely. Looks great. Yeah. Congratulations, Neely. Very Thank nice. You guys. It's a whole team of us working to keep it looks great. And hopefully it'll continue to grow. And uh, we're gonna put our advertising rates up soon and stuff like that. We're just trying to continue to develop it to something that we think will be a, a good tool for us to have uh, moving forward. And right now it's bi-weekly. Um, because again, we need to get our panelists used to reporting regularly. Um, they have to give us their information. We're not dictating um, in the system what they're doing. So we have to rely on them to give us their information, which the funny part was a lot of them said, well, we do it anyway. We just didn't have nobody to submit it to. And if you were in the BDS system, you, you could see it, but we, we, we have it. So it's just something that we would just send to you. So it just kind of works. So it's kind of cool. Hey, Neely, kind of is this cool. a combination of internet and terrestrial radio stations? Right, and right now, our only internet station is Fred Blaine, WNAP. So we're we're working, we're still building. So we probably might add another, a couple more, but it will be, yes. Miss Neely, number one, um, how do you add terrestrial gospel stations to the, the you know, the, the system? The reporting system how do you add that and then number two what else can we do um not just as affiliates but as people in gospel in general what else can we do to help you um with this uh, well to become a panelist we just selected panel panelists that we thought would be significant and that would keep up with what we need them to do and and already kind of have like a lot of them already said we already have our list of our top 30 top 40 that we already have to work with anyway and we have to keep account of anyway so that's what they would need somebody would need to do to become a panelist um what you guys can do is as we develop it if you're into advertising you want to do advertising with us if you want to um let people know that it's there we have different elements of it that we're going to be developing, but we're just, I think the most significant thing that I, I tell our team all the time is I just want us to be consistent right now. I just like the most important thing for me is us being consistent, but Kim, as we go forward, I will, um, I think I have most of you guys email addresses, but I will send you guys emails and we'll like, let you know, this is what we have going on. This is what we're doing. And this is what we need. But for the most part, 
if you're a record and you're getting played and you're reported, you're going to be on the chart. And, so, and somebody said to me today that it potentially could be a conflict of interest for me and or Brett because we work records at radio. And I will tell you already that that is not going to happen simply because um, there have been times when artists have shown up to go into the top 40 and I'm like, I don't like them. I don't want them to be on our chart and the other people go, but that is not why this is happening. And this is not why we're going to be like, they owe me money, take them off. They're like, nope. So I'm a, I'm a human being and I have full emotions, but if, when, if you, if you make it to that chart and you make it in the top 40, you're going to be on it. No matter, owe me money, whatever it is, we're going to put you on there because like, that's the the whole thing of it is to be integral it's not about oh i'm working my records and i want them to be on the chart it's not about that it's just to see another um another look at a, a different look at the charts and to see what other panelists who make their own decisions about radio and are not pressured to do anything it's about that and seeing what they what they're saying how you doing good Hi, to see you good to see you too it looks absolutely beautiful. And I guess my question to you is, will it always be free to the viewer? Yes. Okay. Hey, Neela, this is Norman. How are you? Honey, you Norman, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. good. It's good to see you, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. You don't even live in LA no more, do you? I'm I'm by coastal now. Oh, we well, see, that's when LA. you got big money. That's when you got big LA. money. <laughs> if oh, you can live in LA. LA and somewhere else, you got big money, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're in LA and Delaware. East Coast is good because when you're doing a lot of traveling, you know, here in Delaware, I can cover New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Baltimore, DC, Maryland, Virginia, you know, those things. And from LA, you got to fly. Right. Just two, just two quick questions. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one question is, uh, how do you manage the charge submitted to you from the stations? Oh, so when they submit us the chart, they submit us their top um, 30 singles. And we all sit down and we literally calculate what they sent us. And we go through this whole calculation thing of what they sent us, where it, where it sits on their chart. And then from there, we calculate it and we do this addition process that Brett Keller had to come up with because he used it based on some kind of golf calculation. And once he did that, it made sense to us eventually. And then whoever gets the votes, it, they rise to the top and then it, it descends down. But it, we just take everybody's chart and we literally go through it and we go, okay, you're num on that chart, you're number one, on this chart, you're number two, on this chart, you're number three. First, we see how many charts they're on. And then we see where they're calculated. And then we take it from there and we just go through a whole calculating process. And, and is it your goal that this chart be the charts that uh, major stations use to determine um, music being played on their stations if it's not in the top 30 or 40 or 20. absolutely i think it would be great as a tool so if you're talking about like because we don't have a radio one reporter on here but we do have some cumulus reporters on here or we don't have any iHeart reporters on here we do have one iHeart reporter on here wkkv in um milwaukee um, but he's only on on Sundays, but then he plays gospel throughout and he plays gospel on a weird day part that's like four o'clock in the morning. So he's significant to us. So he's an iHeart reporting station, but he doesn't play gospel all the time. He's, he's like KJLH. I'll give you that because you're from LA. So, but he, so he does play gospel significantly. So people would pay attention to what he's doing because you do want your, you do want your audience to be heard, your artists, the clients that you have to be heard by his audience, because he's really a true, his chart is amazing. His name is Melvin Hood. I'm gonna give you all of that. His chart is amazing. And he's really committed to his gospel audience and to his gospel format on Sundays and throughout the week when he does play it. So it will be a tool that people can look at um, to determine what they're going to play. And it's a lot of stations that are larger and are networked who will say, we don't play hit, we don't make hits, we play them. So basically, if this will be the hit maker, then you go ahead and, you know. So you trust the charts that are submitted, that there was mm -hmm. no manipulation? Oh, yeah. 
we tr I trust that <laughs> I trust everybody that's reporting so far because they are not people who I don't think so far that you can manipulate to play stuff. Um, that's and that's part of the goal. It's like, like for example, if somebody does a, if you have a label, if you do a promotion with somebody for a month, do the promotion. I don't really care about that. It's when you specifically are saying, "Well, do this to keep this here. Do this to keep this here." That's what we really want to get away from. Hi, Sherry Mac. You didn't know you was on here. That's what we kind of want. We not kind of we want to get away from that because we want to make sure that because what happens is you give artists a false sense of who they are. So if I say that you're the number one indicator, you're the number one indicator in, on a chart, what does that mean? What does that really mean that you're number one on the indicator chart? What does that really mean other than you can say now you can say you're number one somewhere and do people in the regular world know what that means? If you go to a chart and say, yeah, I was number one on the billboard indicator chart. What does that mean to the people sitting in the audience? 0.1% of the people in the audience will know what that means. And that's gonna, not going to make them move the needle as an artist. It's when you get up and you sit there and you minister to them from your heart and your soul with a sincere heart for Christ that will make them come and sing to you. I think the frustration is, is that most of the time, all we have now is singles. So if all you have now is a single and not a full body of work and you go sing at a church, you can't sell a single for $10. And if you can, let me know, I'll put one out and I'll go sing tomorrow. But you can't really do that. So if you don't have a full body of work and you can't go and sing in front of a lot of people with one song, the artists are frustrated. So the goal for this is to hopefully get artists who are releasing, get artists to understand if you do get a number one single and a top single, it won't, it won't sustain your career. You need to come back with something else. And that's a part of what we've been telling people a lot. Go ahead and get that single out and be known in your community and in your region and stuff like that, but grow into a full body of work because it'd be a misconception if you think that that's all you need to keep your phone ringing and to keep yourself working. You like full CDs, don't you, Neely? I like, I like full bodies of work. At least give me five to seven. Yeah. I mean, one song, I'm done. I'm like, okay, I'm, that's it. Like we could, and we call them one hit wonders. <laughs> I had another question, Neely. I know that it took a long time to put this together and I know it's a baby, but my question is, is it possible down the line that you do a top 10 hip hop chart? Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. We have talked about how to make sure that like hip hop is incorporated. Like for example, I believe had this chart been available and out when Molly Music um, Bless was out, I think Bless would have been on this chart because it's not like, oh, we're not gonna put something on there that sounds like that. It just needs to be something that the, the, the panelists are playing. And I don't think the panelists are opposed to it, but it's just like with anything, you wanna keep your listeners tuned in and we'll be honest, the younger generation, they listen differently than the buying generation. <laughs> they listen on their phones and they just go and stream. The buying generation listens to the radio still and is committed to that station. So a lot of times those songs don't get played, not because they don't like them. For me, it's because more of, I need to keep my buying generation tuned in because my advertisers want me to talk to them. So yes, we will do that though. I think it's like from that, I think we'll, we even talked about doing an international chart because it's a lot of songs that are international that could do well. So we're open to all of it, but to your point, it's a baby and we just want to see it develop and grow. Congratulations again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lady Shante, you got anything as far as um, radio? Hey, Lady Shante. Any any questions? Hey, Neely. No, I don't have any questions. It's pretty self-explanatory to me. And, uh, you know, I understand that it's a baby. So, uh, you know, you want to see it grow and develop. And we do too. And I just applaud you for taking the initiative before you even knew you had to. So I'm excited about it. Thank you. I, I we, we will probably eventually do a, uh, a, 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 a Zoom or something like this just to get people's input because I don't think we have all of the answers, but we have some. Uh, Sherry Mackey from uh, Memphis, you have any uh, comments or anything you'd like to say regarding this? Uh, Neil, I do appreciate you sharing. Thank oh. you so much. Okay. Vicki Hill. Hi, Neely. How are you? Fine, and you? 
I'm doing great. Listen, I think your chart looks wonderful. It Thank looks you. really good. I'm excited about what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We appreciate that. There's a um, question in the um, chat, Bishop. Connie okay. put any hope for quartet on the charts. <laughs> the 10 spirituals are on the chart, and so is Lisa knows on the chart. Look, I so think if, Connie, again, on. if they play it and it's and it survives that that uh countdown that we do it'll be on there we don't have any problems with it but uh, one thing that you can probably do and we'll put our advertising rates up is to advertise it and then we you will if you see how we have the banners on the side just give us what you want us to click you where you want them to click to because i think one of the things like um I love quartet music. I have a group called the Gospel Wonders. But I think one of the things that happens with quartet is that, and I'm not going to say this is a blanket explanation. There has to be more, like the quartet world is within itself. It runs within itself. So sometimes you just got to break out of that within yourself to really get people to know who you are. Because the baddest musicians come out of quartet bands. The best singers are in quit, like seriously. The but, best. But, but it's a world within itself that sometimes I can say this because I'm a Memphian and so is Sherry. We just kind of like go, okay, well, we can sing and you should know that. But if you don't, I don't care. Right, Sherry? Memphians are like that. They're like, oh, yeah, we sing better than anybody. But if you don't know that, I'm not, I don't really care to tell you that. You just have to ask me to get up and sing. And then when I sing, I'm going to break the house down. But that's right. I'm not going to market it. I'm not going right. to do anything special. I'm just going to sing. And when I come, when you come to my church, we're going to kill. But that's it. And, so, that, and they don't <laughs> always realize the value of marketing themselves or putting themselves out there. They assume that everybody should know. Or I'd rather impress you once you find out. Right. You know, once you show up, you'll see. And sometimes we might not show up to see. So I think when it comes to quartet, I purchase an ad or whatever something like that and we would love 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 to see more quartet artists on this chart and i think connie you were probably you. asking if they could have a quartet well you asking for a quartet event. chart yeah oh um that's the real question ain't it connie was that the real question <laughs> that was the real question oh i'm sorry connie okay i missed it yeah You're you good. know Opposed to that, like like I said, we're gonna do our Christmas thing. So maybe during is it a quartet month or a quartet something like that in the world? I don't know about. We can look at doing that because I think the beauty of the chart is that we run it. So just like we're gonna do this Christmas thing that's never been done. If you like like for example for Black History, I mean Black Music Month, we will spotlight different genres of music. So Connie for Black Music Month, we might just do a whole quartet chart that week or something like that so we can do stuff like that that because it's our chart so yeah we can talk about that when we get to it i might call you and say hey quartet time let's go and, and <laughs> i think you the, call me i'm available <laughs> huh? i think the main thing you guys is that we that we help um uh bring legitimacy to this chart and bring power because the stronger this top 40s chart is um than any other list they bring, people are gonna look at it. So let's just really blow this one up, make it legitimate, make it powerful. And then the next uh, chart that they bring, whether it's hip hop, whether it's quartet, <laughs> they'll believe in the chart because it comes from the same mother. Say this, I find this chart to be so refreshing to see names, and artists that we see and on the road and performing that they actually yeah. have a place where they can actually get some visibility. And it's so interesting when you think about a couple of charts that we saw not that long ago where Kanye West, he was on everything. And I think it's really interesting how the people who you have selected, no one has submitted Kanye West's name. I guess they're not really playing it. But like we said, this brings legitimacy to what we're trying to do. Yeah. So uh, kudos to you, young lady. Yeah. Well, thank and you. That's exactly what we're trying to do and to just make it, and, and without eliminating somebody like Kanye, but to your point, Con, but, and back to the streaming conversation, I thought Kanye was mostly streams and that's his audience. His audience, Kanye, even when I walk, work Jesus walk, walks, my whole conversation to everybody is Kanye is not trying to be Bishop 
uh, West. And maybe now he is. But when I was working Jesus Walks, he wasn't trying to be Bishop West. He was just trying to put out a song that really spoke to his heart and whatever. So at this point, to your point, Sheila, absolutely. The, the Kanye for us is a visit. It's not a sit, it's not a sit down and stay. So it's not like people wouldn't play it or didn't nobody gave it a shot or anything like that. But it's not, it's like a new artist. We've got to, you've got to come and kiss the babies and get to know the people and get it's like, it's like we couldn't start a group right now and say we're going to urban radio and it's gonna blow up. We got to prove who we are. We got to prove we can sing. We got to prove we're gonna be on time. We got to prove all of the things. And so that's one of the things that to your point, all of the artists that are on the chart are doing, they're, they're connecting with the audience. They're connecting with the audience, even if they're bigger, even if they go out and they cross over and they do other things like Erica sings at different things and stuff like that. She's still a good old church girl. She's still a good old first lady. You can still know she's going to be on Sunday. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. She's planted and cemented and, and, and has a foundation in the industry. So I like what you said. And thank you for that, because that's really what we wanted, we really wanted to be. But it doesn't mean that there's not room for anybody else. We're not saying that we want us. We want it to be a legitimate chart to where you see artists grow onto it and that they do more than just say, oh, I got a number one song. So what's after that? Can you get a second mm -hmm. number one song? Can you get another song that's in the top 10 or the top 20? And that means you got to take some time to do it. That means you're going to have to do more than just sing at your church. You're going to have to now go and say hi to people. You're going to have to take Sheila some coffee sometimes. You're going to go have to go see Sherry Mackey in Memphis. You're going to have to go do other things than that. So that's what this chart, hopefully, again, will be a teaching tool. In the chat, um, Tiffany says, what is the strategy for strengthening this chart? We want to be sure we mobilize with real ways to support the effort. Uh, the strategy for it is to make sure that everybody knows that it's here and that it's available to them and that they can advertise on it and all this stuff. But the most important thing for us, Tiffany, right now, honestly, is to make sure our panelists are reporting every, every other week. So the first thing is for us to be consistent. Once we can be consistent for six months, I'm going to like drive y'all crazy. But I just want to get those panelists seriously to keep them on point, make sure Purvis is turning in his report because, you know, I have to call and, you know, I have to say my words in Jesus name. Excuse me. <laughs> how how big is the panelists? You know? Huh? Can you, t can you tell us how big mm -hmm. the panelists is right now? Oh, um, I just added somebody today. So hold on. Right now, I think we're at 19. And, and what is your goal? 25. And 25 panelists determine- Or more, the, it, it, the, it will take more if they're consistent. That so becomes you want, the thing. So you want 25 people to determine what's played nationally? Mm -hmm. and, and how many stations do we have nationally? Gospel oh, stations. We have many, 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 many stations, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, in the time. So you want 25 people to determine what 975 stations play. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I'm understanding? That's what you understand. And to not only do that, but to, but so bigger than that. We want to though we want them we want them to determine how many what those stations play what the audience will listen to and what the consumer will buy because the great cycle of the music industry used to be it was a circle the artist released the record the artist go out and kiss the babies and say hi to the artist the art the the consumer used to be excited about Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays when albums would come out. And they would be like, I'm going to buy this, this, this. They would go to Word of Life bookstore and be like, I'm going to buy this, this, and this, and then I'm going to pay my rent. <laughs> but we used to be excited about when things came out. And so I, we want them to get excited again, whether it's to say, I'm going to download this, or I'm excited that I get to stream this or whatever. We want the consumer to, to, be, be, to, to care about consuming. Because consumption is important. Buying music is important, not just streaming. Purchasing it and owning it again is something that is important. So um, I believe that on some level we can try to do that, even if it's to download it. I don't care. We just want you to be committed to the artist and to, to develop 
I'll even say that to develop some new artists because we have a lot of artists that are out now who get mad. Like, why are Donna Yolanda, Yolanda Fred, why are the same ones there? Because those same ones used to, Norman Hutchins, you know, we used to have you out on the road kissing babies. That's called old school. And shaking yeah. hands. But the new That's generation gets frustrated because old school still works. Oh it still works. It's still oh going God. out to churches and singing and saying hi to people and looking people in the eye. It still works. Developing relationships. It still works. You can't just call the station and go, oh, I want you to play my record and they get mad because they don't play it because they don't know you and you only called them twice. And then Do you have any big boy radio stations or small radio stations or, or what? What'd you say? Do you have big boy radio stations, 100,000 watts, 50,000 watts of these small radio stations? Yep. Are these big cities or small cities? Combination of both. Hmm. Okay. Combination of both. Is it a balanced combination or majority, small or big or what? Balance? I think it's a balance. I think it's a good balance. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a, so. I'll give you five WIMG, Craig Hayes. We have uh, I told you Purvis, I told you Percy Davis. Say the cities, say the cities, Neely. Oh, okay. Pam Dixon, Columbus, Georgia. Uh, Trenton, New Jersey is where Craig Hayes is at WIMG. Yeah. Uh, Purvis is out of Kentucky. Uh huh. Percy Davis is in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, Tracy Williamson in Chicago. Well, right on the cusp of Chicago. And we got more. So yeah, it's good. We just got a big one. I'm excited about. So like I said, we'll let you know. We're gonna put the panels, the panelists on the on the website eventually. 